This Royal Enfield 500 goes into the count among the Asbo bikes as number 38. I've literally just finished bolting the last few things on and charged the battery and I'm going to give uh, the first attempt at starting it a shot in a moment. Um, mechanically it's very similar to 37. Uh, the crank's been lightened in the same manner. Uh, we've still got the plain big end in it. This one's got high capacity oil pumps that were already fitted and the um, relief valve for the scavenge return line which is also a good thing. An alloy cylinder barrel which I've shortened by two millimeters in the case of this one. We've got the uh, so-called nine to one compression piston in there. Competition valve springs, uh, a slightly oversized exhaust valve which was my idea and Hitchcock's uh, took it up. Um, where on some of the Indian bikes the uh, exhaust valves are just a little bit too small for the seats and they only just sort of make contact with the inner circumference of the seats and can wear out quickly. So it's more to address that problem than actually enhance the uh, performance or anything. Anyway, I've got it ready to start. Uh, it's got a Boyer ignition on it so I'm only sort of guessing that the timing is somewhere in the zone where it ought to start with any luck. It may or may not do so, it might blow me into orbit with a huge kickback, I don't really know what's going to happen, but uh, hopefully I can get it running and then um, get the strobe on it to do the final setting up. So, uh, And we've also got the uh, standard camshafts in this engine again, just as in number 37, with the inlet retarded by one tooth. So very, very similar. I'll put the camera down here and uh, let's see what I might get for my efforts. take a while this is the first time I've turned the fuel on since I've rebuilt the engine and put it back in there we go ignition's on let's see what happens one. No, I think the uh, I think the timing is out. I shall have a quick go of adjusting that in situ, just in case I can grab enough to get it going. It looks like we might have to do a part two. Bear with me, I'll just nudge it one way and try that, and nudge it the other, it's so far out, it's difficult to tell which way out it is. I'll try advancing it.
wife. Okay. There they are. I like to give it to everybody, warts and all. It's not perfect every time, but performance classics. I'll make a few adjustments and uh, I'll try round two soon. Here's Asbro 38 again and uh, this is going to be my second attempt at starting it. I've checked the ignition timing on this boiler compared to um, that on Asbro 37 which is still here and the timing actually appears to be correct. So um, I checked the carburetor and found to my surprise that someone had put a 330 main jet in there. So. Um, I've put a 240 in there, which is closer to what I'd want uh, in this state of tune. Uh, I heard that uh, it was a pig to start and ran terribly as it was before. I never tried to run it, but with uh, the wires crossed on the boyer before and the 330. Ah, and a sticking float. Right, well, there's fuel in the float chamber, so I'm going to give it a try, but uh, that could be uh, another thing I need to look at. Let's just see what happens. got a spark and I know the ignition timing is where it should be. <coughs> yeah, it's charging the battery as well. Well, just in case the wires on the boiler need to be Swapped around and not colour to colour, but the other way about. Seeing as how this is how it was when it arrived here. I don't really see that it's gonna help, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt. more to this than meets the eye. But I'm going to carry on with my investigations I think and see why we've got a dud. That's Asbo 38 running. Um, sorry you all missed out on the first start. I wasn't really expecting it to go there. The reason being, I've spent the whole day messing about with this ignition and set it up by the instructions, timed it as it should look in the instruction sheet and um, all I was getting was loud bangs out the exhaust pipe and flames out the carburetor. In the end, I got that despondent I just undid the centre bolt in the little rotor there and uh, screwed in my extractor bolt to waggle it free on the uh, distributor shaft and just kept on just moving it round bit by bit by bit by bit and in the end I started getting some violent kickbacks so I moved it some more and I just gave it a kick then and it started so uh, I'm very happy with that, but uh, unfortunately everyone else has missed out on the first start, but <laughs> it's taken all day to get it. Um, and my next job is going to be uh, get the strobe on it and set the ignition timing up properly and accurately, I hope. 
Um, I'll just try giving it a kick now and see what happens. Nice kick back there. I'd say that we're a little over advanced there still, so um, my next job will be to get set up with the strobe, set the ignition timing as it should be. But there we are, we've got um, brand new main bearings, brand new big end bearing, brand new high compression piston, brand new aluminium cylinder barrel, brand new valve guides, brand new exhaust valve and brand new uh, competition valve springs, as well as some rather nice shiny new alloy wheels so I built the engine on them so uh, I'm looking forward to riding it and knowing that uh, most of the bike was actually built or rebuilt by me so uh, once this lockdown lifts if it does in Wales I'll get out on the road and give it a try but next thing I'll get the timing set up and then it should be ready to go all being well well here I am coming up to the end of the working day with ASBO number 38 and I've finally got a runner and got it timed how it needs to be and interestingly the timing is not nowhere near nothing like what the instruction sheets show in fact what I had to do with this in the end uh, desperation I just kept undoing and moving the uh, magnetic rotor round and round and round bit by bit until it got way away from where it supposedly is meant to be and then it began firing and kicking back and then eventually it started and finally I've been able to uh, make my timing marks up and strobe it done all that so um, here it is Asbro 38 what we got on this one um, well I built the front and rear wheels with stainless steel spokes and alloy rims um, that's a rear one. we got uh, an aluminium cylinder barrel bored out to take one of those um, so-called 9 to 1 pistons but I've also shortened the cylinder barrel by a couple of millimetres. We've got a new exhaust valve, an oversized one which actually uh, came about to uh, my suggestion to uh, Hitchcock's and that's just um, to get a little bit more contact area between the valve and the valve seat on some of these Indian ones where there's uh, only really the sort of inner part of the valve seat circumference that the valve touches down on and you get uh, what can get rapid valve seat recession as a result so these exhaust valves are about a millimetre and a half bigger in diameter and just seat that bit nicer so there's uh, one of those in there new guides uh, competition valve springs with standard camshafts with the inlet um, retarded by a tooth I've lightened the crankshaft by about 1.2 kilograms and uh, I think well, we've got new main bearings and a new big end in it as well. I think that's about it. Now then, I'm going to put the camera down and uh, let's hopefully start and run this beast at last. Bit of smoke there, hopefully that'll clear when we've got a few miles on it. It hasn't actually been anywhere at all yet, this one, not even up and down the lane, I've only just got the thing going. So in that 389 monoblock carburetor at the moment, it's still got this 106 needle jet in it, although I've raised the needle a notch. Um, it's now in the fourth groove, rather than the middle one. And uh, there was a 330 main jet in this, 
I took that out and I put a 240 in it. Uh, the 330 is way too big. I've never used anything that big in any of my Asmo bikes. I think the next thing for me to do is uh, get a couple of trips up and down the lane on this. It's also got, um, we already had them fitted when it, when it came here, it's got the high capacity oil pumps in it, this one. Um, <coughs> high capacity oil pumps and the scabbing's relief valve um, conversion which is a useful bit of kit. It takes a lot of strain off the oil pump to drive train, especially when you wet something cold. Finally, it's taken most of the day to get that thing to run at all. Um, the, uh, the ignition timing uh, where the rotor is set against the uh, back plate just makes no sense at all compared to the instruction sheet and where it was set originally when it came here. I was going to start uh, thinking about changing the entire ignition system if a coil didn't do, a tri do the trick. Um, but I decided instead to move that rotor round bit by bit by bit and I'm so glad I did because it saved a lot of work and wastage of useful and working components. So there it is, ASBO 38 and uh, hopefully we're in a bit of a, another couple of weeks lockdown here in Wales now but uh, hopefully I might get a short run on it but uh, before long but it won't be too far and hopefully just make sure everything's in order and that uh, it is all actually done. So there we go, another one running.